Hi all. As mentioned yesterday, I thought we could have a look at the other encounter a year later, 1990, between International Master Danny Kopek and Grandmaster Alexander Ivanov. So they met again in the Queen City Open, the 14th edition, in round four. Now the location, just to be sure on this, I'm checking it, it's Manchester, not in the UK, but uh, Manchester is the largest city in the United States state of New Hampshire, which is the 10th largest city in New England and the largest city in northern New England, an area comprising of the states of Maine, New Hampshire and Vermont. OK. Uh, so now that we've established that, let's get on with the game. E4, the Sicilian defense, a repeat. And will it be the Copac system again? Yes, he repeats the Copac system. So has Alexander Ivanov prepared something in particular? He plays knight c6, c3, g6, the bishop, the Copac bishop goes to c2, bishop g7, castles. And it seems logical to clap down on d4. Uh, Black is saying to white, if you're not going to play d4, how are you like making your pieces that active in the future? d3 knight g e7 now h3 h6 bishop e3 as though there's really an intention now to play d4 h3 also stopped the pin on the g4 knight but black reacts aggressively again with f5 so reminiscent of the previous year's encounter e takes but here we see g takes f5 Previously, we'd seen bishop takes f5. And now, again, though, even without bishop takes f5, knight h4 is played here. There's an immediate idea of queen h5 check. Black plays bishop e6. He can parry now queen h5 with bishop f7. But the Copac bishop tries to exchange off that light square bishop and leave black more vulnerable on the light squares, potentially. Now here, d5 wasn't played but maybe again f4 is an interesting idea trying to isolate some of black's pawns after f takes you'd end up but also of course d5 is not even possible actually we can just take on c5 so pardon me there but even if it was even if it was supportive of b6 d5 layer f4 is still a viable idea black here played in fact bishop takes b3 and we have a takes b3 black castles knights a3 and now f4 it looks really aggressive stuff from black but he is weakening these light squares knight f5 hitting the knight on h4 twice it just goes back and now d5 it just looks like an aggressive pawn center but on the other hand you could argue this is a little bit like well provocation just just to try and destroy the center later we see rook e1, some pressure building up. Queen e7, and now c4 trying to secure that e4 square. If black pushed, that would be a beautiful e4 square for white. Uh, maybe a knight can reroute to e4 somehow. But uh, black just supported d5 with rook a d8. We have knight b5, which actually hits a7. Black ignores that for the moment, just plays d takes, and after d takes, Although it looks vulnerable, there's no immediate way of winning a piece or anything because e4 is under control. We see knight f d4. Now knight b takes d4. Perhaps best is knight takes d4 here. In the game, e takes d4 is played, which leaves white a very strong move now. Can you see what white plays uh, in this position? There's a vulnerable pawn in black's camp all of a sudden after this move. If I give you five seconds to pause the video here, what would you play with white? Okay, rook e4, yes, just targeting f4. And if black tried to defend, then there's queen c1. This pawn is going. So black played d3, liberating his bishop on the diagonal. Rook takes f4, so it's like an exchange of f4 for b2, but this is part of double pawns here. Not as significant as f4. Rook takes, bishop takes, bishop takes b2. 
Now the, the awkward looking rook a2 was played perhaps a little bit better is rook b1. So rook a2 here, but it's got the idea of trying to put pressure on the d pawn later. Bishop e3 hitting c5 that's protected. Knight e1 and there's an idea of rook d2 clearly, but knight b4. Rook d2 is played here, even though it seems to allow black a very strong move. So this is again provocation to try and weaken not just the light squares, but now connect those weaknesses to black's king safety. The provocation which wasn't uh, provoked fully was bishop c3, that here a move like queen h5 is a little bit dangerous for black. Uh, if this pawn is kept under blockade, then it can start to get tricky. Black's got a lot of weaknesses around his king. So black decided to play it safe here with queen f5. And then we have a surprising looking move, g4. It weakens the king. And here, perhaps arguably technically best is queen f3. But uh, g5 was played. And in this position, this might have been the right moment to play bishop c3 here to try and win the exchange in this particular position. But h takes g, because now queen h5 also gives the rook room to breathe with rook d1 if, if there's any bishop c3 coming. But at the moment, bishop c3, queen takes g5 check, picks up the rook. We have rook d6, knight f3, rook h6, Queen g4 and here it's fine for white again he, the worst of his troubles are over actually. Black's played very very aggressively with his pawns so after the queens come off here rook g6 bishop takes g5 white is fine now. So if nothing else here against a very strong gm Black's tried to play very aggressively to try and wipe Danny Coppett off the board, but his light squares were first weakened and then pawns around his king were weakened. And here this end game is just interesting. It's Black has to hold on to this pawn here, b5. We have bishop e7 though. Now hitting c5, b takes, b takes, rook c6 protecting c5, bishop d8. Bishop c3, and you might not think of this as a potential error, but it is a potentially loose piece, which can be a target sometimes. Rook d1, rook e6, and here off the knight g5, it's clear actually that rook e2, that may be, and it's kind of potentially clear, that rook takes d3 is handy for white to, to get rid of this dangerous pawn in this position. No, actually it doesn't work. Rook takes d3, there's rook e1 check. <laughs> Ignore that, hmm, pardon me. No, excuse the speculation about rook e2. But this is where a huge blunder occurred. Okay, black to play and blunder. Guess what he played and why is it a huge blunder? It is It is a massive blunder in this position and it wasn't rookie two. That clearly, it's not refuted with rook takes d3 because of rookie one check and then knight takes. But black did blunder in this position. Can you guess? If I give you five seconds, guess the blunder from black. Okay, rook e5 was played. Now, what does this allow white to play? If I give you five seconds here. And white's getting the advantage again with bishop f6. He's he's winning material, at least the exchange. Yep. I mean, there's ways you can just leave that rook there to be taken to lose the exchange, but it, white's in the driving seat now. And I assume this is after time control. This is move 42, white's in the driving seat after that terrible blunder there. We have rook takes g5, giving up the exchange like that. a5, it looks as, as though the pawns are still dangerous though. But here, bishop e3, very nice. 
hit c5 wipe out black with bishop takes b4 coming up bishop takes c5 and black didn't want to play on from here he's falling to bits in this position he resigned if a3 bishop takes bishop takes rook takes d3 is possible in this position because a2 guess what white can play in this position okay not rook d1 because of bishop c3 but you can get behind the pawn here with check for example rook a8 and then that pawn is dropping yeah it's a bit of a scrappy game uh, but you know the Copex system has beaten this GM now twice basically in a row in this important tournament in Manchester New Hampshire one of the largest cities in of, of New Hampshire okay <laughs> twice in a row so it's not a bad weapon of choice uh, used quite successfully here it seems by Danny Copex so yeah very very interesting system and you know one of his important legacies is the Copex system that this game is another example of so I hope you got something from that rest in peace Danny Copex comments or questions on YouTube thanks very much